welcome everybody. Thanks for joining me. My name is Dave. Um, today what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some injector testing. And the reason I'm going to do that is because I'm trying to work out this problem with my throttle. And I suspect I've got a weak injector. So we're going to have a look at that. So um, if you've never done injector testing with the Tech 2, this is a video for you. So just before we start, um, I've got the bonnet open now, I've got the Tech 2 connected, but I just wanted to tell you that I've ordered a new gasket and seals for the rocker cover, um, that's for in case I have to do an injector. If I have to do an injector, we'll be doing injector seals and the copper washer, we'll be doing a video on an injector swap. So that'll be interesting for a few of you, I'm sure. I need to get on to the testing because the gasket's not arrived. Word of warning, I went to Repco, and they wanted $73 for a rocker cover gasket. Now, if you get the rocker cover gasket kit, it's got the half moon seals, a new round seal where the pipe goes in, and some other bits and pieces. They wanted $240 for that, an extra $120 for who knows what, $150 for who knows what, a couple of bits of rubber. Went online, ordered it from a parts, auto parts store in Brisbane, $84 for the kit, including postage. Repco wanted to charge me for getting it from their warehouse to their retail store. So I told them to stick it where the sun don't um, shine. Get the ignition on, get the Tech 2 fired up and get uh, doing on this testing. I brought the Tech 2 out here because we need to turn on ignition. That should be done. Should be going to look at turn on ignition, confirm. If you get that, that means you haven't got your uh, ignition turned on. So it can't communicate with your system. So we get it to connect to it. So what we need to do is do is to go to miscellaneous test. So we go back because I've gone too far. Miscellaneous tests. So at the bottom there you see injector control, injector balance test. First one's the injector control. This is what we call the click test. So what we need to do is press this and listen for clicks. I suspect that injector one is the quiet one. So hang on. I don't know if you could hear that. But injector two was a bit louder. Ah, it sounds like. Injector 4 has got no clicks at all. So it looked like Injector 4 wasn't clicking at all. So what we're going to do now, is we're going to do the, uh, the other injector test. I've started up the engine ready for that. I just get myself into the, uh, the menu again, turn on ignition, waiting for data, down to miscellaneous tests again. This time, injector balance test. We've got to warm the engine up first. And then you turn the injectors off one at a time and see if it makes a difference to the engine No, Obviously, if you're running at four cylinders and you've got the injectors all running, that's fine. But if you turn the injector off, it should go down to three cylinders and start running rough. While we're waiting for the engine to warm up, this is an injector. This is the solenoid on the top. This part here is the injector. This one's marked up as a bad injector. We've used this one before. And the seals are here. And the copper washer is here, look. See on the end down there. That copper washer, you've got to exchange that. Now. So what I might do is I've got here an ultrasound cleaner. And what I might do is put injectors in, put some diesel in. Put injectors in and give the nozzles a clean for a, a couple of hours. See how that goes. Because I've got to find some injector spur on there anyway. So this is an oil rail as it sits in the uh, block. That is the OPS, the oil rail pressure sensor. And this is the feed pipe that comes up side of the engine and in. This is the oil rail. Oil rail cat end caps. And the injectors fit on here. Obviously, you get high pressure oil into that hole there. It's what drives your injectors. This is what this is the characteristics of a Huey engine. Instead of being fired by diesel, it's fired by oil. And high pressure oil, the the what we call poppet valves, in. So, this is where it clamps on, and in here is a poppet valve. So, a signal comes from the ECU. 
the poppet valve opens, the high pressure oil goes in, and the high pressure oil multiplies the pressure of the diesel up to seven to nine times, which forces the diesel out through the injector. And then, of course, once that's happened, the poppet valve closes, the oil leaks out, pressure disappears, and the valve closes. So no more injection, but by then another one's open. So the ECU is doing this all the time, and it's controlling all the injection, and it controls the pressure of the oil via the RPCV, which is the rail pressure control valve. So the RPCV is mo gets moved by a solenoid, allows more or less oil pressure up in, into the rail. The ops measures the pressure in the rail and tells the ECU what the pressure is, and then the ECU controls the pressure by the RPCV and so on. If the solenoid on the top of the injector is not working correctly and your poppet valve isn't opening properly, then you might not get good response from the engine, and that could be what my issue is. I've always had a quiet solenoid on one of the injectors, and I think that might be the problem. I think we've got to get this temperature up to about 84 degrees, so it's going to take a little while. So we'll, I'll, uh, I'll come back to you when we get there. Okay, so what I'm doing at the moment, I'm trying to get the engine up to temperature. I think it's about 74 degrees we need to be at, and we're about 68 now, so we're getting close. So it shouldn't take, so 68 we've gone up to, so it shouldn't take too long. Okay, so while we're waiting for that, another job I'm going to do today is I'm going to change my battery box for the King's one. This is the King's battery box. The one I've got in there is an oldie battery box. And I'm a bit concerned that my battery might be faulty because it's down to 12.9 volts and there's nothing in there that's operating the battery. So why it's down to 12.9, I don't know. So what we might do is it might be the battery box reporting it wrong because those voltage sensors, those voltage gauges do go wrong occasionally so we'll uh, we'll swap that over after we've done this temperature test well I've got to, through the power of uh, editing you're seeing this immediately but i've been waiting half an hour the engine's been running all that time i can only get it to 77 degrees and it needs to be to 84. i'm going to have to go for a drive so you're going to have to bear with me guys well aren't i the stupid one so i went for a drive left the tech 2 connected and it went into it went over 84 degrees and went into testing mode but of course I couldn't do the testing while I was driving so I drove back pulled up the drive and by the time I got out of the car lifted the bonnet pulled the tech 2 out to the front it was back down to 77 degrees again and I, it was hot enough so I never got to do the test I'm afraid but the principle of the thing was you, you, you run the test, you turn each injector off at a time. The engine I, ideally is running rough and you've got an injector that is faulty. You turn the injectors off until one of the injectors does not make any difference to the engine note or it, it stops you know, the engine shaking. Basically, if you're running on three cylinders or you've got a bad injector and you turn another injector off, it gets worse. But if you, if you turn an injector off and it doesn't get worse, then you know that that's the injector that's faulty, and that's the one you need to change. The other thing I've got to confess to is the battery box. Change the battery box over to the King's one, like I said I was going to do, and in doing so, I connected it all up and realised that the, the battery was still on 13 volts. It wasn't charging. I could not understand why it was on 13 volts. And then I realised that what I'd done was I'd actually... I, on my charging circuit, it comes into the to the, the battery charger in the back and then goes from there through a 60 amp fuse into the battery. The fuse was turned off. It hadn't blown it, it just got turned off. So the, the charge was coming into the char to the DC to DC charger and it was lighting up, but it wasn't getting into the battery. So the battery was never charging. As soon as I, I realized that and I clicked that back on, the battery is now up at 13 and a half volt. So it's charging up again. What a dumb ass I am. I really am. I'm putting it down to lack of sleep. The fact that my finger's broken and it hurts on the night time and I can't sleep that well. That's the, the latest news. I'm waiting for my rock gasket kit coming with the new seals and everything. Once I get that, I'll then find some time, find an injector. I'll, I'll uh, put the injector into ultrasonic cleaner, make sure the nozzles are clean. I'll show you that. 
and I'll show you the fitting of the injector, including the new seals, the new copper washer, and how you talk that down correctly to get that to work properly. That's all coming, so stand by. <laughs>